Let me tell you what, you're in the right place if, number one, if you're clueless about podcasting and want to learn more, you're in the right spot. We're going to teach you a little bit more today. Number two, if you're curious about podcasting and need some tips to get uh, further along or to get started, you're in the right spot. Number three, if you are skeptical or uh, think podcasting is dumb or <laughs> just don't understand it, don't think it will help you, you're in the right spot. And number four, if you are stuck uh, with your marketing or your business growth, you don't know what to do next, you're in the right spot. Glad to have you here. We will take care of you. This is a safe spot for all of us. Okay, so about this session today, we're going to get through it fast. Uh, we're going to spend about 30 minutes together. I'm just going to speak to you just really clearly. Um, I'm just going to distill the best ideas, share those with you, and, uh, and we'll just get right to it. I've got five big ideas to share with you uh, about why people are more and more businesses are just leaping into podcasting and making it a, really a key part of their marketing and maybe why you would want to do that too. Five big ideas. Also going to share really just the easiest strategy that you can use to build a trusting audience. It is shockingly simple. You're not going to believe how easy this is and that all these answers are just like right there in front of you. And I'm going to give you three ideas for podcasts that you can steal and start these. I don't really see these being done out there today. And so I uh, just want to make these available to you. You can take these things and run with them. Now, who's talking to you? I think I know several of you, but uh, if, if we're not familiar, my name is Leighton Hart. I'm a podcast host and producer. Um, also uh, host a YouTube channel where I do product reviews and tutorials on you know, gadgets, social media, apps, uh, different software, things like that. I'm a social media content creation creator. And um, the way I wrote this, it, it makes it look like I am a wife and four kids, but I have a wife and four kids. And we live here in East Tennessee. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. About Market Street Media, what we do is we help forward thinking businesses create content that grows their businesses and that their audiences love. So if you're not a forward-thinking business, or you don't want to grow your business, or you don't want to entertain an audience, then that's okay. No harm, no foul. But those are typically the people that we work with. All right, let's get to it. I want to tell you about why starting a podcast for your business may be a good idea. And I've got five big ideas for you. Here's the first one. Here's the first big idea and why you may want to start a podcast for your business. Content is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Now, consumers are spending more and more time online. 2020 definitely taught us that. And, you know, now that we've gone deeper with our, our the way we consume content and, and how much time we spend online, it's, I, I really doubt that it's going to like scale back much. I think it's, we've hit a new, you know, high water mark and, and that's where it is. And it's only going to stay where it is or increase. So people are spending more time than ever online. And because of that, if you want to attract people or you want to, you know, entice people to do business with you, you have to go where they are. And where they are is online. My favorite story that makes this example really clear to me is, is the old story about Billy Graham. And when Billy Graham was starting his ministry or reaching out to people, he would, you know, as was the case at the time or the style at the time, just go out and knock on people's doors and walk through neighborhoods, get to know people one-on-one. -on -one. And, and, you know, the, the story goes that he was knocking on doors and, you know, sometimes people wouldn't answer. He just was, wasn't getting the response that, that he thought um, or he was expecting. But what he said was, as he would walk up to these homes, he would see the glow of the TV through the front window and he would see the family gathered around the TV. He said, people aren't out on their porches in their front yards. They're around their TV. The family's around the TV. And so if he wanted to catch people and, and grab people's attention, he didn't need to be on the front porch. He needed to be on their TV. And so that transformed uh, what he was able to do. So just think about where your people are and can you go there and get in front of them? And where your people are is consuming content online, really. So 
in, in businesses, listen, businesses aren't always amazing at adapting. And this point's going to become really clear in just a second when I tell you about who a podcast listener is. Uh, but businesses aren't necessarily always stellar at adapting. The old way of creating content or, or the, the way that's been kind of the mainstay this far has been uh, creating blog posts and articles. That's been 92% of, of companies who use content marketing are creating blog posts. So obviously, it's a very important part and that goes back to, you know, how do we catch the attention of the search engines? You know, we create easily readable content that the search engines can see and index and, and then put in front of, hopefully, our ideal clients. So 92% of people are using blogs. Only 13% of businesses say that they're using podcasts. So a lot of people blogging, not many people podcasting, not many businesses podcasting yet. But again, think about that. Not many businesses podcasting. But let me tell you about who a podcast listener is, the podcast listening audience. And that's reason number two, why I think you should start a podcast for your business. The second reason I think you should start a podcast for your business is because that that's where your customers are. And podcast listeners are people that you want to do business with. So think about this. The way I think about this is, I was in, you know, sales and, and, and sales consulting for a long time and, and um, financial advice and, and, and think about how much time you spend in front of your, your customer or a prospect over the course of a year. If you're lucky, maybe you get an hour in front of that person, you know, to specifically sell, sell your services, not just the, hey, how you doing, you know, what's going on maybe an hour a year, right? So <laughs> it's measured like in, in minutes or maybe, maybe a full hour over the course of a year, if you're lucky. Question for you, do you feel like you could close more sales if you could trap <laughs> your ideal customer? You don't want to do this. Like this is not a thing you should do. But if you could lock your ideal customer in a room and have them listen to your presentation, the whole presentation through, do you feel like you could close more sales? And I'm guessing the answer would be yes, probably so. If you could lock everybody in a room, make them listen to you, um, you'd probably close more sales. Well, <laughs> you may actually be able to do that. Podcast listeners, 64% of podcast listeners listen to podcasts in their car, which means that they can't do anything else. All they can do is sit and listen to you if they're listening to your podcast. They're in their car, they're driving to work, they're running kids you know, to activities, they're on a road trip for, uh, for work, whatever. The next statistic that's really important about this too is, is that 93% of podcast listeners say that they listen to the entire episode most are all of your entire episode, which means you've got them for a long, long time. You are in their ear and you're in their mind for a long, long time. Also, when you look at, at selling to other businesses, if you are a business selling to another business, 64% of, of people who do B2B, business to business buying, who, who purchase services for their business, Listening to a podcast is part of their buying journey. So, you know, obviously they're going to be asking for uh, referrals and testimonials from, from other users, case studies, things like that. They're going to be reading articles, they're going to be reading blog posts, but 64% of those people say that part of their process is listening to a podcast. So think about this. If you create two 40-minute episodes a month, if that's your podcast, two 40 episodes, two 40 minute episodes a month, and you do that for a year, that time you are in your customer's ear for 16 hours over the course of that year, 16 hours that you get to be in your customer's ear. That's, that's wild. Now you have to create content that they want to consume. It can't just be, here's our product and here's what it does. And here are the features and here's the benefit and, and here's how it'll help you. It has to, you have to put the content in, in the context that they want to consume it. But you get a huge share of your customer's mind and time. 
in their calendar because they're, you're in their ear for a lot of time. The other reason that a podcast listener is a good customer for you is that they tend to be a little bit more educated and a little bit more affluent than the general public at large. So 41% of podcast listeners have an annual income over $75,000 versus that's, that's true of 29% of the population at large has that income, but 41% of podcast listeners have that income. So, so podcasting is a habit that you know, people with, with higher incomes, with more spendable money have. And so again, always smart if you're selling a product or service to sell it to people who have the ability to pay for it. So that's point number two. The third reason that you should start a podcast for your business, in my opinion, is that a podcast lets you position yourself in the mind of your customer. Catch up on the slides here. So it lets you position yourself in the mind of your customer. So you get to engineer when you create your podcast, you get to engineer the way that your audience perceives you. You get to decide what you want to be known for, and you get to build your content around that. That's kind of abstract. I said at the beginning, I was going to be really clear. And so I just want to tell you what I mean by that. If you want to be known as, let's say you want to be known as, as a business that always delivers on time, your service is delivered on time, your product is delivered on time, you never miss, you are on time. That's the value that you provide. Well, what you can do is you can build your content around that. You can, in your episodes, talk about the process that allows you to deliver on time. And so episode examples would, would be things like, hey, our, our people that we have on staff here have been here for a long, long time. They know this business inside and out. They're not making beginner mistakes. They're not making you know, mistakes that cost us time and cost us money and, and slow us down. These people have been around for a long time. They know what they're doing. And you talk through that on your episode and interview those people and talk about, about how long they've been there and why they've been there and, and how being there for a long time makes them good at their job. You can talk about how you use the latest technology and that helps you deliver on time. You talk about the software that you use that helps you map out your, your delivery routes so that your people you know, aren't stuck in traffic or, or, or wasting time, wasting gas, things like that. You can talk about how your back office is all digital so that you don't waste time um, printing, copying, waiting for approvals, things like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that process all that behind the scenes stuff that lets you deliver on time. And that's going to be your show. Um, think about what you want to be known for and create content around that. And it's okay to be really clear about that, to be really, really clear about what you're about to be, to say, listen, we always deliver on time and it's really important to us. And we want you to know why that's important to us, why that matters to you or why it should matter to you. Um, why customers like that, and just be, be really clear about that. You don't have to, you know, dance around that topic. What it shows to people when you do that is that you are obsessed and there is, there's method to the madness of your business. So method to the madness, like everything you do is for a reason, and the reason is to solve your customers' problems. Um, that's reason number three why you should start a podcast for your business. Another reason. Reason number four, I think you should start a podcast for your business is that it gives you really an incredible opportunity to network with people in your industry or in your community. What I would say to you here is, is that having a podcast, for me at least, this is my own personal uh, testimony, is that having a podcast created opportunities for me that a, a business card never could and never would. Um, so the, the standard... You know, the old standard when I, when I sat uh, in, in other offices that I worked in and listened to people you know, making sales calls and trying to get appointments, the, the standard uh, calling on another business was always, you know, hey, Mr. Business Owner, hey, Mrs. Business Owner, I, I want to come by and I just want to learn about your business. Do you have some time that I could come by and learn about your business? Well, I would make the case that that doesn't work so much anymore. I, I would say that that's an old way of doing things. That sales pitch is, is dead. What about if you could 
make some calls to people that you strategically want to get to know and say, Hey, I would love, I have this podcast. I would love for you to tell my audience your story, you know, tell them about your product, tell my audience about your new program, tell my audience about your, your new event. That's a different deal. Like you're, you're giving this person something at that point, instead of asking for their time, you're giving them an opportunity to, you know, promote themselves, promote their business, promote their event, um, build their own brand. So it's just a tremendous networking opportunity, relationship building opportunity. That's reason number four. In the fifth reason, I believe that podcasting, starting a podcast for your business could be really smart is that it's fast and it's cheap. It's fast and it's cheap. And, um, and those are good things. So you can start a podcast that sounds really good. You could do that. Honestly, you could do that this afternoon with less than $100. And you don't have to invest a lot of time in the, the content either. You can, but you can also do it really quickly. Uh, you can create a podcast with as little as a keyword, uh, a, a topic, a prompt, um, something like that. So think about writing a blog post. Writing a blog post can take hours, if not days, to, to write it and come up with the outline and write it and, and check it and edit it and do all that. Video, too, which, which we're huge fans of video. We're broadcasting this by video right now, so obviously we believe in it. But video can freak everyone out because nobody wants to be on camera or scared about messing up or, or whatever. Um, so video can freak people out. And if you really want really highly produced video that can be really time consuming and it can be expensive, again, not reasons not to do it, but, but podcasting, you can get started for, for cheaper and faster than that. Let me give you the, the quick, good, better, best on starting a podcast for your business in terms of cost. So a good scenario would be you can start with a hundred dollar mic and free recording software, and you can have an amazing sounding podcast. I promise you, you can do that. A, a better case would be you can spend $200 on a headset mic like we have here in our studio. I'm looking around for one right here. Here's one. I hope this doesn't mess anything up. There you go. Headset mic. That's 200 bucks. A $600 Rodecaster Pro mixing board. And you'll sound amazing. You'll have a really, really great sounding podcast as good as a lot of professionals that are out there. And then kind of best case scenario would be you can buy a $400 studio mic, like the Shure SMB, SM7B, which we've reviewed on our YouTube channel, Market Street Media on YouTube. Look at that review. Buy that $600 Rodecaster Pro mixing board and then a $400 Mevo streaming camera, which is what we stream our, our podcast that we record in the studio on. So right there, 1400 bucks, you've got a, a studio quality setup and boom, you've got a content studio right there in your business where you can create podcasts quickly and share them with the world. The warning for you here is there is a learning curve. Um, the learning curve for, for starting a podcast and hosting it and having conversations like that is it, it's about a five episode learning curve. Like by the fifth episode, you're on your feet, you're feeling good and, and you feel like you know what you're doing. The technology learning curve is a different deal. So <laughs> it just takes longer. It takes more trial and error to figure out what you're doing with the technology with if you're going to live stream or if you're going to record it and how you're going to hook up your mic and how you're going to you know, produce the audio. That learning curve is a little bit steeper. And if you just want to cut through that so that you can avoid embarrassing or expensive mistakes, I'll raise my hand and say, you can hire us. We'll take care of it for you. So that's five reasons why you should be podcasting for your business right now. Five good reasons. Now, one huge obstacle that people always bring up, whether it's podcasting, YouTube, um, even social media, is this. I don't know what to say. People say, I, you know, I just, I don't know what to say. Like we're having a sale and I posted the thing about the sale, but like once the sale is over, I, I don't know what to say. It's a huge obstacle. And I want to fix that once and for all for you. So here's the plan. Simple strategy. 
answer every single question a customer could possibly ask ever. And where I would recommend that you start is start with the things that you wish you had a sign in your business for. Here's what I mean by that. Here's what I mean by that. Um, if there's a, if there's a door um, that everybody tries to use, um, but is always locked or broken or whatever, and you wish you could make a sign that says, you know, don't use this door. Um, maybe build some content around that. Tell people, hey, you can't use that door because, or here's why we keep that door locked. It's for your safety. It's for their safety. It's for, you know, whatever. The fire marshal says you have to. The things that you wish you could, you know, need, the things that you wish you like, you feel like you need to, um, have a sign for, uh, at, at the bank. No, you can't, we can't cash that check for you. Um, if you're in the medical field, no, I can't prescribe that for you. Um, if you're a gym owner, uh, here's why you can't do that at this gym. Those things you wish you had a sign for build content around that. Just explain why answer people's questions and then think through your entire sales cycle and, and, and everything about your business. What are the questions people ask? what's on people's minds and then just answer those questions simple strategy if you don't know what's on people's minds um i'll show you how to do it go to answer the public.com and i think what i'm going to try to do here is let's try something here stick with me let's see if i can go get out of here and let's just go over to answer the public. And I'll show you how this works because it's really cool. Answer the public.com. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think who's on here. Let's see. Katie, let's do this one for you. Let's say you're a physical therapist. Or let's say physical therapy. Search. It's thinking and it's producing all these questions. These are actual things that people are searching for based on that keyword that you typed in. So look at this, look at this right over here. When physical therapy makes it worse, when physical therapy, oh, hang on. When physical therapy doesn't help, when ther physical therapy doesn't work. Um, let's see. Who benefits from physical therapy? Um, let's see. Are physical therapy internships paid? There's just all sorts of questions. Will physical therapy help scoliosis? Um, will physical therapy help to pinch nerve? These are things that people are actually searching right now. Um, so go to answer the, and then what you do is you create a podcast episode and just say, hey, um, today we're talking about pinched nerves and whether physical therapy will help pinch nerves. We think it will. Here you go. Okay, let me get back to presentation here. There we go. So answer the public. Just do that. Now I want to share with you three ideas, three podcast ideas that you can steal right now that I really don't see people doing. And I would love for you to, to copy one of these ideas, make it your own. Number one, if you work in a business or offer a service or have a product where there's a long sales cycle, um, life insurance, um, you know, big capital intensive equipment, uh, complex services, things like that, walk through every step of the sales cycle and build an episode, build some content around that step. So I was shopping for life insurance recently, and I had a few concerns. Um, number one, I'm older than I was last time I bought life insurance, and I was afraid that that was going to make it dramatically more expensive than I wanted it to be. Uh, number two, I have um, chronic migraines, and so I take medication for that and consequently have more doctor visits in a year than most people do because of chronic migraines. Was that going to impact things? Could I still get insurance even though I have a chronic uh, medical condition? All these questions pop up, like how how do how are we going to do the medical exam? Uh, you know, where the nurse comes to your house and 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 does those things during COVID. Like that's a question. That's a piece of content you could create. You could take 
all of these steps of the sales cycle and build content around it, build a, a blog post, build a podcast episode around that, and then put it out there, distribute it for people to consume. Because as people start their buying journey, like we said, 64% of business to business buyers are listening to podcasts. They're going to see you as the person who is out there, you know, pioneering and, and leading the charge and educating people. So that's one idea. Number two, I think this is a, probably a, an idea with some legs that, that I would love to see somebody take and run with internal leadership development. And what I mean by that is this is a podcast that is not for the general public. This is for people inside your company. And you use this to, to build leaders and, and develop the culture of your business. So um, think about the principles, the ways of behavior, the ways of treating people that you want people from your organization to be known for, the way you want people to carry themselves inside your organization and build content around that. Here's why we um, always wear a tie, you know, when we're meeting with customers. Here's why we always make sure and um, check all the doors, uh, you know, every hour on the hour. Here's why we um, always return every email before the end of the day. Here's why we, you know, all the things that, that you think make your organization special or different or unique and that you want those want people to, to really believe in and buy into, make some content around it. And then number three, third idea that you can take and steal today is to look into the future. So look into the future of your industry, look into the future of, you know, your typical customer and be the person who's making predictions. I did this a little bit on, on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram over the weekend. I just, I made the, the statement, hey, in three years, I think everybody's going to have a setup sort of like we have here inside their own business, meaning they're going to have a nice camera, they're going to have a microphone they can fire up, and they'll be able to make content inside their own business. If you're not that way, then you're going to be out of the norm. You're going to be a little bit left behind. That's just me thinking about the future. That's me seeing what I see now, seeing how I think consumers are going to continue to behave and how business is going to develop over time and just looking into the future. What that's going to do for you is it's going to position you as, you know, someone who is up to speed with your industry and not just up to speed, but certainly not living in the past, not trying to do things the way that things used to be done, because who wants to, to deal with somebody like that? But as somebody who's trying to advance, trying to grow and trying to move things forward for the good of everybody. So that's the third idea. All right, I've kept you longer than I'd hoped to. I wanted to land this thing at 1130 so that you can get back to work and, and doing the good things that you do. But I do have a special offer for you because you came to us and you're on the webinar today. Um, if you are ready to start your podcast for your business, special offer, we've never done this before actually. Um, we're offering 50% off the first month membership here at Market Street Media. So you get your first month 50% off and we'll extend that offer to you when you sign a six month membership with us. Um, to get that offer, you've got to reply by midnight on March 9th. So that's uh, a few days away. I think that's Tuesday. So it's a limited time offer. If you come to us next, you know, on the 12th or something like that, we're not going to extend that offer to you. 50% um, off the first month, that'll get you in. You can get your legs under you without feeling like you've spent a ton of money and it doesn't cost a ton of money to, uh, to do business with us anyway. Um, but you can get in, give it a shot and get those five episodes done so that you really have your, your sea legs underneath you. Okay, question is, who has two thumbs and is really glad you attended? This guy right here. If you need me for anything, you can reach out to me Email is marketstreetmediahq at gmail.com, marketstreetmediahq at gmail.com. Always glad to have questions. If you have them, just hit us up and I will get you an answer. So that's it for today. Hope you all have enjoyed. and We will see you later. I'm going to stop my screen share and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in.